I really like to move the discussion on to bone targeted therapy for metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. And Chris, maybe I'll start with yourself as an expert in the field and as the leading author of one of the major papers in the field. Um, just thinking about the patient selection for radium 223, and what, what, what I mean, what, how, how do you choose a patient for radium 223? What's, what's your approach to that? So, um, obviously, patients need to fulfill the eligibility criteria. Yeah. So, they have to have bone metastases and they're not allowed to have visceral disease. Yeah. Uh, but that includes a large proportion of patients. Yeah seems to me the most important mistake one can make is not to use radium at all. Yeah. Um, so it, it always amazes me when you hear um, meetings like this, and you have lots of discussions about the treatment of CRPC, and they're always talking about abiraterone, and enzalutamide, and chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And so many of them don't even mention yeah. radium-223. And yet the survival benefit is of the same order of magnitude. Yeah. The safety profile is just as good, if not better. So I think the main, my first message would be, think about using it. Yes. And then secondly, as to when to use it, well, we don't know. We don't have evidence to support that. But as I was saying earlier, my preference is to use it earlier rather than later. And I'm particularly mindful of the fact that visceral disease becomes more common as time goes by. And so if you put it off too long, then you won't use it at all. And then I do have this um, hunch that it's going to be used best in combination with an AR-targeted drug. It seems obvious that there should be some sort of beneficial interaction, a, a synergistic interaction between radiation um, and AR targeting. And what about the symptomatology? So, the, I mean, the license states sym symptomatic patients. Well, what's your approach to symptoms in these patients? Are the presence or absence yes. or definition of? Well, it's no accident I didn't mention symptoms. Yes, I know that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, th there seems to be no biological reason why radium-223 would work in men with symptomatic yeah, disease and not work in yeah. men with asymptomatic disease. I'm very mindful of the fact that many men, if you ask them whether they've got symptoms, they'll say no, yeah. but in actual fact, they are symptomatic. Yeah. So many men that I've treated with radium, after a month or two, they say, oh, my pain's gone away. Yeah. You know, I had it for months and months, and I thought it was just because I was getting older. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I really don't find it a very helpful distinction to make. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I think obviously the, the reason it's on the license was to get the trial mandated symptoms, which was really to have, a, I suppose, a worse bunch of patients with potentially a quicker readout, perhaps. Is that right? <laughs> oh, you, you guessed. Yeah. yeah. So you're absolutely right. So the trial did say symptomatic because the sponsors wanted an early readout. Yes. But um, the definition of symptomatic was extremely broad yes. and included patients who were just taking one paracetamol a day sure. and on that were pain free. Sure. And I mean, I suppose, that, like you said, there's no, there's no optimal timing, but I think I agree with you, the, the earlier use has the other advantage of getting it in there and then potentially moving on to other therapies afterwards. And um, one of the concerns sometimes that's expressed is the use of external beam radiation in, in, in either uh, as an alternative to radium-223 or in combination with radium-223. And what, have, you, have you thoughts on that and based on the data? Yes, I find it a rather strange question because yeah. in my practice the question never arises. Yeah. So I would always use radium-223 long before a patient might need to have external beam radiotherapy. Yeah. And so really I regard external beam radiotherapy as a admission of failure yeah. because you should keep patients asymptomatic or essentially asymptomatic uh, until they're quite close to death really. I completely agree with that. I mean I think, I think, it's, I think it's safe to use external beam radiation in somebody who potentially has a maybe a large soft tissue part component to their bone metastasis at the same time as radium perhaps. 